This is the time on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. And of course, we are here to analyze some of the biggest sentiment stories and um, have fun while doing it. My name is Osi Godwin, and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluo What up, 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 okay. Why are you not looking like what up? I was not the what up finish now. I'm done. Okay, like, cool. You're supposed to give me a response. What up? What is what up? I don't know. What's up? What's happening? Mm. What's what? Okay. What's popping? It's not a brand. So, how are you doing? <laughs> <I'm today>? Good. <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, the no Nollywood actors, filmmakers have taken to Instagram to protest um, the continued closure of cinemas in Nigeria. The online protests um, tagged hashtag Safe Cinemas highlights how the continued closure um, stifles the growth of the entertainment industry. Steve Gukas, Faust the Bad Guy, Omotola Jalade Kende, um, Toy Abraham and Osasi Godaro are some of the stakeholders who have joined this online protest. Yeah, we need to save a lot of things. We need to what? So there's a lot of things we need to save. Mm. So safety, that's the problem. It's the same conversation. I do think that the cinemas could open, though. And they could do, like, you know, half the... Half the pop... What's that word? They, when they, there's a term they usually use when they want to break down the size and say... Half capacity. Ca half capacity. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So I, I feel like they could do something like that. I know I read somewhere where they were saying that because it's confined and it's usually cold, it's easy for the virus to, you know... Spread a lot more, but I feel first like and foremost, I'm not supposed to allow you in when you're coughing or sneezing or you're. Yeah, but what if warm? you're fine and then go and and then, take a cough inside them? And then I think we also discussed. So it that cannot happen table. in church. There are churches that are cold. Mm -hmm. I think we also Trisha. discussed it on this table where we said um, that you can buy tickets online. You, there shouldn't be tickets over the counter mm. anymore. You get so. No popcorn, if it's, no drinks. Yeah, no popcorn, no You're not having any interaction. They're just checking temperatures. And then there's spacing. You have seat numbers. There are ways to mm, go about this thing. No drink. It's okay, guy. You carry a popcorn from home. If you drink, what a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> the food is very important. Because that is what I go for a hot dog. Yeah, I'm uh, no, I feel like you're having contact where they are exchanging money. I wear glove. Just open the cinema, we'll be fine. We cannot die. <laughs> no, I think there are ways, there are ways to put um, prevention, um, pre precautionary measures in place. And mm. um, like most churches are doing, we have the automated um, sanitation stuff. So mm. before going into the cinema, why, that's the investment. Maybe into you can the, wear your face mask while you're watching the movie. Yeah, that should yeah, be course, part of the rules. Yeah. And that is part of the investment in this sector that we're talking about, the entertainment sector. Now, we have people, investors that can easily put in place this automated um what's it called now Sanit sanitation stuff mm. but they're not going to do it because they feel so assuming the money was there we only so just five percent that you want to start taxing us for we didn't uh, be part of like the even private things people like this in place. The cinemas. most cinemas in this country are not owned by the government so i feel like the private owners themselves can put automated Sanity, come on! Like, how much is that? Does that thing actually cost? That's well, I think I think that the owners of the invest. cinemas are ready to put whatever measures um, necessary to ensure that um, they at least try to curb the virus. Mm. I'm, I'm, if churches can open, if clubs can open, I mean, what are you yeah. talking about? Mm. So I think it's off the back of that that um, this protest is going on. It's not because they just woke up and they felt like they're talking, they need to mm. talk. You said restaurants can open, clubs can open, churches can open. So why yeah. can't a cinema Why can't open? a cinema open, which is what they are trying to say. It's not like they don't understand I'm that sure there's virus open, so. or anything. So in my head, I'm thinking that there's probably an oversight whereby there were representative for of every arm in that um mm. tax force or whatever they like to call themselves but nobody was representing the cinema so they kind of um forgot the, about, about their yeah. existence so, this so is like MB, maybe they should yeah mm. so maybe they should try to speak to the um people making the decisions it shouldn't be difficult for someone like um if I was or Imo Abudu or someone to be able to get to someone in the government to understand I mean, why. I mean, already been dealing with their money. <laughs> <laughs> it would be difficult for them to have a conversation to yeah. understand why um, it was omitted because I want to see that omit omission. Because mm. if all these other things are, can be allowed to open, I don't see any reason why it's not I think it still boils down to the fact open. that they don't take the entertainment 
accept it seriously. Mm. They still look at it like it's something that we can do without. But they need to know that he's bringing in a lot of revenue. He's putting a lot of food on. He's like putting I, food yeah. on a lot of people's yeah. tables. I can imagine what it's like for so, people who are there. earning from here. Like you haven't earned any while because mm. of that. So I think it's something. It's not too too far fetched for them to ask the government to please look into that. I'm hoping that the next briefing by Lagos State government will definitely um, include, the include them. Mm, yeah. I think it will. I mean, if international flights, we are looking at opening soon. So that really I mean, freaks me out. But one, sure, give us our cinemas back. Save the cinemas. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on. Megan Thee Stallion has been accused of faking injury after pictured after being pictured without foot bandage. Hmm. They don't yeah, know if this lady wow. is to if she's to heal quick. If she, you know, there are people like that. You know, watch all those movies where mm. used to. I mean, I don't know. I've never really been very interested in this story. But then I remember when you were particular was talking about how um, the reports did not say that he shot Megan the Stallion. I, I, I can't, don't know if you can mm. remember when you were trying to analyze that part. It's a gunshot wound. I don't know whether it was from. It was. It could have been a flesh wound. It could have been anything. So there, there were no specifics. Do you understand? So that's well, why. Well, you mean like the bullet and the leg, or that mm, he's yes. the one who did it? Because that's no, that's no, what I remember the argument was about. That you were saying that he wasn't the one. No, who I said I wasn't sure that it wasn't stated if it was the one. And that I'm also, shot her. Mm. Mm. And then I'm also saying that in this case too, we were not okay. Well, she had to undergo surgery, so it couldn't have been flesh wound. I, 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 from what I got from the story and how she, even how she narrated it, I don't think the bullet and the foot actually go in contact with each other. I think, I think there was some type of damage, maybe a bruise or a pass by or some. I don't know. No, where but she said she had to do a bruise. surgery to get the bullet taken out. I did not read that one. No, 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 no. no. Wait, she took the bullet yeah. out. The first thing yeah, she that she put to, did surgery to take um, get the bullet. Taken Taken out. That was our first statement. Ah, so she heals fast then. <laughs> she's a vampire. I don't know. What if if all of this is PR stunts for mm. both working to pop? But how would you involve the police in a PR stunt? That's true, though. I don't see there how that shoots. That, that was hard. That okay, wait. So the PR stunt isn't that is isn't that the that they they actually shot for real to do PR or what? What are you saying? Mm -hmm. The shoot did not exist. No, that was the, the shoots came. <laughs> <laughs> they had to let me the shoots. Okay, but the, the shoot actually came. Somebody shot somebody. There was an somebody. altercation, there was a party, no there was a gangster. So, what, so what, what, how, how does that connect to the story, though? That, that then she has, if she was really shot, then why doesn't she have a bandage on her leg? Well, another Even thing if is, it was she could have been without a. Well, another thing she is forgot. the occasion also. But she happened. was really shot. What if the appearance she was going for was something that she had been booked for a long time ago and she, there was a certain way she was supposed to look? And then so the, she had to remove the bandage? Yeah, yeah. You, some people I, can, have I to, can see that because yeah. what's it called? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Cardi B had something wrong with her leg when she, that she couldn't perform when she was mm. pregnant. I don't know if you remember that story. We, talk, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, but she, um, I think it was another um, Snapchat, Snapchat that she had to make because they were like, you are faking this, blah, blah, blah. And she was making noise that she needs to make her money. So she just the pain mm -hmm. and performed yeah, with her yeah, swollen leg yeah, yeah so, so it's, it's very possible for that to have happened i don't know if if well if the bullet was removed like two weeks ago it could have healed i mean it's not let's try shooting that. you and see if you heal it what happened to your own leg it is easy for <laughs> and what kind of bullets are we talking about actually because i feel like if a bullet goes through your bones mm, like i'm not legible but i don't know about bullets so. i think so I let think, me fair can i say i think it, the gun recovered that if i'm not mistaken is a 38 caliber which is a very serious high-tech gun so <sighs> i don't know so i think now, wow okay. this story well I, I think i'll put my money on the fact that she just wanted she to chest the, no, no she wanted, she wanted to, to chest the pain and not remove and remove the mm -hmm. bandage for so that particular moment car? Not no, people didn't go to check the scar. Okay, they just now. did not, just see, did a not see the mm. a bandage oh, and okay. they jumped into okay. So what if the hole was there? Mm. <laughs> what if? What if? Hole. What if? Mm. Tea time continues right after the short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I just see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. I can still 
people make music and people are still by. Some say they look myself minimal eye. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. Like I got DM sometimes from <laughs> Mala we like. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. This is Delta Time on Plus TV Africa. All praises to the goats, and this is Drake reigning accolades only win um, for uplifting his career when he was an upcoming rapper. Mm. It's important to do that. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think it, especially when. People have forgotten, if that makes sense. Um, I, f I feel like if this was the beginning of his journey and he was doing that, then yeah, of course. But it's really nice and refreshing for me. And it's almost like a good a, th a good uh, um, character to display. Mm -hmm. That even when people think you have forgotten about where you're coming from, because he's so big now. Like, Drake like it's, is it's even massively to big. Relates to say, okay, honestly, Lil Wayne that did, Honestly. You know? I don't know if it's because Lil Wayne has Leo behind his name. There are so many things that he gets accolades for that. I'm wondering, I don't get, are you guys trying Wale, to what's that, you? that Drake is now bigger than Lil Wayne? Yes. Uh, who is bigger than Drake? Do you want me to bring out stats right now? Because hmm. there was one time, question, randomly, I, I, was, I bumped into his stats and I was just like, what? The amount, I, I feel like he's not, I, I feel like people don't even know how big this person is because I'm not a fan of him per se. Like, I don't want to look for Drake's song. Not like I don't like him or anything. I think when I saw the numbers long. and how many people are in front of him, maybe it's just like one or two. And those people even bounce between him. Like, we're talking big guns globally uh in terms when of music it says thank catalog, you I, I, a drake can never catch up to a Lil Wayne. music catalog Bec I'm not you know you are the, you are, the, you are a strong um hip-hop hardcore hip-hop person so it's i'm not even surprised that you definitely choose a Lil Wayne over a drake any day no, I'm not but even, you understand that's, that that's not even a drake it. came in and those who love hip-hop love him we that are not so hip-hop heady can still relate to mm. what he's doing and he has that he has he's like that balance between both worlds mm. yeah so you can't really compare but when is my deal every day every mm. day like, but but yeah. at the end of the day it's not even need to compare i think yeah, the point is that a big different. person is say is remembering his roots and thanking mm. people that give him an it's opportunity like a whiskey, remembering to talk about banky w, w. hopefully yeah. that will ever happen nigerians we need to change but yeah <laughs> and then another thing i admired the most was the way um Lil Wayne to the main words when he was talking about Drake, he went straight to talk about the first time he listened to his music, he was like, who's that dude? Then they had the hook of the song, he was like, who signed the hook? And they were mm. like, same guy, and he was like, who's this dude? And then where is he from? And they said Canada. And then he met the guy and he was like, whoa, you get it? So the mm. connection was there. And that's based on what you just said too, like the versatility, he can drop you the... What whole do you mean by catalogs? Can you please explain that one to me? Music catalog, when you're talking about the number of songs, hit records. Did he just say catalog? No, the catalog he said before. The catalog he said before. Oh, I did not actually so. even digest this. Yeah, music catalog. When I'm talking about music catalog, I mean features, tracks, albums, stuff like that. Yeah, that Lil Wayne has more than Drake. I'm not, I don't think I know. Wow. Mm. It's not an argument, I'm just asking. Mm. Okay. So, back to what I was saying. Where was I? That they had good connection and that they, they had good connection yeah. and then um this guy saying it is just a lesson that man no matter how big you are and you see somebody doing good stuff mm. always believe in them because mm. you never know where they would end up they can end up being compared to you even mm. saying that somebody might even say is that person might be bigger than you mm. it's not an insult it's just that you were the one who gave that person a chance mm. and opportunity and i think that's what we're all looking for I mean, reading the story was enough. it's a good thing to read actually mm. and i'm glad that drake is doing this and um it's good to see both of them flying and mm. it's not and he was saying something that he was actually the only one who believed in him mm. to call him back so mm. yeah did you see drake's yeah. um, throwbacks you look <laughs> <laughs> you like drake it's okay <laughs> okay moving on i want my kids to be happy so definitely not encouraging this entrepreneurship path it's super hard it may make you rich very unlikely but it will more likely than not cause unhappiness the deep kind, the kind that just grinds everything to dust. I think I need a 15 kilometer run. And that's coming from Nigerian entrepreneur and co-founder of Iroko TV, Jason Njoko. Mm. Great stuff, um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> if it was great, it was his dog. <laughs> no, I'm getting there. I think um, we've, we've said it a thousand and one times, you know, motivational speakers will come up like it's easy for you to just wake up one morning and say you want to start your own business. It's a good idea, but you have to 
think about sustainability you have to think about the challenges that come with owning your own business you have to think about how to face certain things and how to overcome them because some of them fall into depression like if you start up a business and after like two years you're still not making any profit it's enough to drive one crazy mm. then someone who's guaranteed that for the next two years is 24 months 24 months my salary is guaranteed that's somebody that still has some sort of assurance but you that you're waking up every morning you're bossing your behind off every day and you're not even sure of the outcome so that's why i like the fact that it balances that it can make you become rich or maybe not mm. sometimes it could take everything you've got and you won't succeed mm. so it's about having a proper plan before you even think about being an entrepreneur because mm. um if you feel like um it's a bed of roses oh i have money for capital or oh, is it cool do, thing yeah, to it's do because a, cool a lot thing, of people then. are going into it now because it's a cool thing i'm just saying oh i'm, I'm like, my own boss I'm, I'm, I wake up when I'm mm. on. Mm. I'm not waking up anything. Just my <laughs> salary. So, so I think I think at the end of the day, no matter how entrepreneurial you want to be, you need to have the foresight. You need to have the technical know-how. Wasn't it also talking about um, hand skill-based things as well, or it was just Jason. yeah, or just and this was all the tweets he just put out mm. basically. Yeah, because okay. I feel like the comments that I was also getting was also about. Um, skill-based things in Nigeria, which is probably, I think the reason maybe they're bringing that is because it's the hardest thing that you can uh, probably do for yourself in Nigeria if you say you wanted to be um, hands-on. Like so the comments are saying if you're skill-based, then it's even worse. Like you say, worse? like if you, um, blue-collar jobs, yeah. rather, like plumbing, carpentry, mm. all that type of stuff. That if you, if you wanted to go into that as a full business on your own, that the chances of you having credibility or being or that being sustainable i don't know Cha. so most of the audience we're talking about uh, i i agree I, th I don't think everybody is uh built to, built be, an to be an entrepreneur i feel like it's this is the first city and i've lived in quite a number of cities where being an entrepreneur is so like in if that makes sense i feel like mm -hmm. it's really rare in other places because there's i think it's even taking more seriously one i don't think everybody here takes it that seriously and nigeria is the kind of place where mediocre is very allowed mm -hmm. um and you can cut corners and not do the red tape and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff so everybody mm -hmm. can do it mm -hmm. but i feel like in other places if you hear it those people are actually it's in their blood they're really good at it and it's not because you can dress as so you open a fashion shop or, it's not because improved. you can you have a lot of following that you sell something like it's a lot more intense and some calculated. of the more, yeah really calculated you can tell it's people have a, a flair for it um but here it's very different i think the only problem that i i had with his message it's not about him i think it's about the country it's about just too um money driven as a people and i can't blame us per se like i said it's not really about him i feel like in other places they've managed to get to a point where there's more to life about the decisions that you take that isn't just money driven it's about fulfillment and happiness and i feel like if you're born and raised you don't even get that opportunity to live like he that because money. he mentioned on happiness too he, i think he tried to balance it in his mm. tweets where he said he started with it could make you rich or not Mm -hmm. And then it, it's also, but he's also saying that it will cause cost unhappiness, but it's more likely than not cost unhappiness. Yeah, because you're not because you don't have money. That's what I'm saying. That I, mm -hmm. I want to get. Isn't that what he's saying? Because I you're not think successful. It's because you don't have money. Okay. The person we're talking about has money at this point. Okay, so what's and it? He's what? successful. <laughs> okay, so what's, it, what's causing unhappiness as an um, entrepreneur? So I think for entrepreneurs, this is I might be wrong. I don't know, but for entrepreneurs, basically most of them are. Uh, um, purpose driven and they there is something they are portraying per time so it's either they want to solve a certain problem mm. they've seen or they mm. want to ensure that this is working a certain type mm. of way and they are of service so whenever when you are serving in a place like nigeria and you want to make some things work in a place like nigeria i'm not sure that fulfillment can ever be complete because you will sleep and wake up it's and like, there's one policy that will take you from mm. 100 to zero before you know what is going on. So it's like filling thing. a basket, trying to fill a basket. Thank you. And another thing, expectations are high. You know, when you have a business idea, you'll be like, ah, there's no how in the next six months I'll mm. be doing this. It's and then, to. So, mm. Yeah. I'm, I, I, no, you even, you'll be convinced with the projections you that in you. six months yeah, man this is what i'm doing this is what i'm going to do yeah. you done everything. then it happens one year six months you're still not you, you could you could actually be improving but you're not where you expected Protected yourself to, to be me, yeah. a year ago come on you will be an happy mm. i like how you said yeah. everyone is not built for um entrepreneurship mm. and i think like you said we've had this conversation on this table over and over mm. again where i said it said it and even the anchors we used to have previously will be like oh no that's the code and i'm like 
like <laughs> this thing is not a joke if you're not built for it you're not built for it forget about motivational speakers and telling them to aspire to aspire if those that are actually in this entrepreneurship journey sit down with you to tell you their stories then you understand that it is not child's play it's not I, something mm, you I get also, into I also wish that if we, you don't have the skin for it yeah i also wish that we would start to normalize um people who are just good at also being employed um i Thank think you. that i think that that's a, also a good skill like you need there are people who are created to help your business move mm -hmm. not to own a business and i think both parties need to be valued Definitely. I, I, i've seen people who have done marvelous in um other companies that mm -hmm. companies want them so badly mm -hmm. but they, are they don't have one single interest of running their own i mean that but but um you know, appreciate us, please. Okay. Thank you. You appreciate us. Mm. Okay. Now, moving on to the next story. I am tired of men calling women gold diggers when they say they want a man who is okay. This goes um, to both men and women. Bring something to the plate. I love my mom, but I don't ever want to struggle like she did. I'm not interested in marrying a billionaire. Just work, man. Stop making girls feel like crap because they want more. And that is coming from um, Uriel Oputa. And XBB Ninja star. Well said. Well said. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it's been, it's been a, th a trend lately. Um, even this guy on Twitter, this dog, doctor, Oluf, for me, something, mm -hmm. kept going on. And I was almost very close to meeting him because I was making so much noise about this thing. He made a tweet about if a woman is more likely to leave a. A, a broke person over a cheat and then a woman a man is more likely to leave a, a cheat over a broke woman if that makes sense so you can already see where he's kind of alluding to that we know we value money whatever and i don't say anything wrong with that i'm not here to suffer um i do not sign a deal with anybody that you know i must play humble like i want good things in in life and everything and i don't think there's anything wrong with that even the conversation that comes up when they say have it first yes i can have it all but i also i so i also don't find anything wrong if what i have I want the person to have more than what I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like that's also not a problem mm -hmm. for me if that's what I want for my life. Um, and I, I feel like the, the men are allowed to do that as well. And they do. Yeah, the only difference is that they're more silent about it. I think the women who who practice hypergamy where they go into a class that's bigger than them, they shout about it a lot. But the men that do the same thing where they come from lower class and get engaged into, with a woman who's in the upper class, they don't make as much noise, but everybody actually does that. So I'm without 100% on the fact that you need to stop shaming people who want better for themselves. Because so there's also quite a lot of women who don't mind lesser or equal or whatever. Like so, Nikon and Kidwire. <laughs> Sorry, I have to go there. It's, wow. It's, 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 it's an example now. Nah. Okay. Do you think that, that money was the, was the, was the um, driving force in Erica's you think decision? Erica is Eri upper does class. Erica even know about Kidwire? Yes, yeah, she does. Oh, she does. She does. And how, the whole house how? does. When he says, if you say, oh, you're going to leave his house. When he I'm talks, he talks, he talks when he about talks, it all the no time. Way you won't yeah. know. I don't think he's, she's aware that we're, we're talking billions. Like, mm, he's a billionaire. Yeah. So I don't think that. But I think she knows he's okay, right? Yes, they know she's, he's but very Like you okay. said, I don't think there's anything wrong in wanting better. Like, you're in a certain place and you want someone who can meet a certain standard, then it's your decision. Like, yeah. like you said, there are people that are very okay with even okay. going lower. Mm -hmm. And it is fine. It's not a big deal. It means that a man can aspire to go lower and a woman can also aspire to go higher or lower yeah. it's just what you want and the fact that you like someone who doesn't see you as capable to fill in some certain roles and uh, they are not trying to get into that relationship not because they probably do not like you but because they want to use their head rather than their heart mm. then you now think oh it's gold digging yeah. what exactly is the gold do you even know what gold is like how many gold is in your body yeah. you're digging uh, so uh, i think uh, if you want to obviously balance the conversation mm -hmm. there are women that are um, money driven and I don't even think it's about the um, person's class where the, if the person me, is billionaire or whatever driven, I think there's people driven. I think there is in this country is a, a bit of a dependence from women to men in over providing even when we're never talking about relationships and then there's a trade by butter thing for sex and money there's all that culture that happens mm -hmm. that obviously is not really promoted but if I'm going to decide on my partners or my suitors rather and I decide to use money as a factor you can't come and flog me for that we one. all know even a lot of parents will tell you that um, as a woman you shouldn't marry a broke man or as a man um, I, you need to marry into an affluent family and all stuff like that so in this part of the world i ain't going to deny it both male and female were money driven we're mm -hmm. looking at who is yeah. better yeah. as a man i want to get married to somebody a that is bringing yeah. something it might not be monetary yeah, yeah it, it should be, be monetary you know, just bring, like i said yeah. bring something to the you, table it, it, don't make always your about money. better yeah yeah no, so not. let's our collaboration make Sense. Yes.
Mm. That is it. So that you can blow. So that, that is that blow. is the point. Okay. That is it. And mm. that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time as Ife tries to blow. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and please send your opinions I'm via blown. WhatsApp to 09065719 or Twitter Twitter Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors Ife Omai and Ife Oluwashenke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe. Thank you.